Hello and welcome back to another bullet journal video. In this video, we're going to be setting up some financial spreads so that we can keep track of our money this year. So there's a couple of things I'm setting up today. One of them is going to be an income and budget tracker. We're also going to be setting up a savings goal slash progress page, as well as a debt payoff page based um, loosely on the snowball snowball. Yes. The snowball plan. Oh my gosh. I forgot what it is. The Dave Ramsey thing that snowball. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Um, and those are the things that we are working on today. So the first thing that I'm doing here in this bullet journal is that I am cutting out some of the pages to make a little like Dutch door situation. And what I'm doing this for is because I wanted all of my income tracker and budget tracker to be on the same spots. And I didn't want to have to like rewrite everything a million times. I have a lot going on. I have multiple YouTube channels. I have affiliate programs. I have products posted on different marketplaces. Like I've got a lot going on. So I have income coming from every which way, which is great, but also can be um, a lot to keep track of. And then I also have a lot of different areas that I budget for. So some being, you know, expenses and bills and something like savings and different pots of money for the business and for personal and just all sorts of things. So this little setup that I'm doing here means that I'm going to be putting all of my income sources over there on the left and all of the things I budget for over there on the right. And I only have to write all those things one time and then I can just flip through and have a spot for each month. So you'll see more of that momentarily. I'm just kind of trying to get my bearings. If you haven't seen my other bullet journal videos, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about what we've got going on here. This bullet journal is from a brand called Primrosia. I have never heard of them before, but I needed a bullet journal quickly because the one I ordered was the wrong size and it was a whole big thing and everybody was out because it was right during, you know, planning and Christmas and all that kind of stuff. So I found this one on Amazon, thought I'd give it a try and I love it. Spoiler alert. Um, we're not super far into the new year yet, so I haven't used it a ton, but so far I am here for it. It's really nice quality. The paper is watercolor paper, so it's like nice and thick. It is a little bit textured, just FYI, um, but I've been loving it so far and I'm really excited to use more paint in my journal this year without fear of it wrinkling the papers a whole bunch. Um, nothing too crazy because we're, we're not, we're not there yet, but I would love to do a little bit more. I got the one that has the toucan on the front of it because I thought it was cute and it's green. So I have like kind of a green and gold situation going on all throughout. And I also, this pen I'm using is, or marker, I guess, is from that same brand. They had pen sets. And so this one is a brush tip on one side and a fine tip on the other. So not like a bullet tip, like a Tombow, but it's like a fine, like tiny tip. So now we've got some lines because each of these pages is going to hold one quarter. It'll be one quarter of income on the left and one quarter of budgeting on the right. So there will be a spot for January income on the left and a spot for a January budget on the right. And hopefully this will help. I've never actually done, I guess I did try to track my income last year in my bullet journal and it was a disaster. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this will work a little bit better. We shall see. As far as markers and supplies go, that gold that I used at the top is a zebra metallic brush pen. I am obsessed with them. They came in a whole set and I love them. They're amazing and the ink dries very quickly, which is excellent for us lefties who need to not smudge the whole paper. Okay. Now I'm just adding a piece of craft paper to the front of this little booklet. I like having the Dutch doors, by the way, because it helps to pare things down. But when you want, and it helps to kind of like show that it all goes together. But when you want something to stand out, then you want to have put it inside of a box or in a different color or in this space in some craft paper. So I added a little bit of craft paper, which I've been using throughout my bullet journal. I'm just using double-sided scotch sticky tape and I did use a corner rounder. It's from Amazon. It's not the best quality, but it gets the job done. Um, I will link all of the supplies that I can down below, by the way. 
may not be everything, but what I can, we shall put down there. But having like craft paper or something like that just really helps to make something stand out. And so I, that's what I want here, which is where I'm going to put the money rules. So this is where I'm putting things that I need to remember, like for example, making sure I'm saving 10%. And I also put 10% towards the church. And so like, those are the kind of things that I'm putting here, just kind of the rules for budgeting um, and different things that I want to make sure that I remember as I'm going through and doing my budget. On the right hand side, I'm going to put my ideal income and my ideal budget. So what is like a realistic um, amount that I would like to make from each of my different income sources, and then a realistic amount that I would like to spend um, in different budget categories. So here I wrote down a couple of my income sources and a couple of things I budget for. I didn't write everything down because that would have taken a really long time. And you know, you don't, need to know all that information. So I just wrote down a couple so that you can kind of see where I'm going. So that first box right there is going to be for January. So I will put however much money I make from Teachers Pay Teachers in January in that first box. And then I'll continue all the way down and then I'll add it up at the bottom. So I'll know how much money I made in January. Then when I flip it over, so this will be January, February, March. When I flip it over, then it'll be April, May, June. And so it'll work that way. The things on the sides, I'm only writing one time so that that way I'm just, I'm just saving myself writing. Honestly, I'm being lazy is what's happening. So, and also then I remember to check all of these things because sometimes I do forget. I'm not gonna lie. I'm doing the same thing on the right with things that I am budgeting for. So I'm just adding them to the part that is on the bottom piece of paper, not on the little Dutch doors. A couple of things that I budget for. Again, I didn't write it all out so that I don't you know, waste all your time, but just so you can get sort of an idea. So like how much am I giving to the church and how much is going into mine in my husband's account that goes towards all of the bills and the house and like that kind of stuff. How much am I spending on myself? Because you know, you gotta, you gotta have a little bit of fun with your money. You just, you just do. And so, you know, I need a little bit for myself for fun things. And then how much am I putting it into my different savings accounts and those different things each month. So that first rectangle on the right hand side is going to be for January's budget. And I'll write down each of the different items on that first page. Like I said, I'm doing ideal. So like how much I would like to spend in each how much I would like to make from each that is realistic. So how much I realistically think I could make on TPT monthly. And it just kind of gives me a good place to start. So that way, when I am doing my budget, especially, then I can look and say, oh, okay, I would like to, you know, put this much into a savings account. I would like to put this much into here. I would like to put this much into the church. And so it just kind of gives me a good like starting place that I can then run from. I'm adding in each of the months just to add a little more structure. And I think I might go back and add a, um, like a gray marker on every other line to make it a little bit easier to read. But for now, here we have some of our first budgeting situation. It's now time to turn the page and get to our savings tracker. I have a couple of different things that I save for and a couple of different accounts. And so this way I can put my like track how much I am saving each month and hopefully getting to my yearly goals. I mean, yearly goals for savings are pretty small at the moment because as you'll see in a minute, I am paying off debt. And so that's what we're doing on the right hand side, but for, savings, I do still like to save something because it just, it just makes my heart happy to, you know, make progress in that way. Um, so I'm just adding the title in green or nope, that's gold. That's gold, Becca. Oh, by the way, definitely grab an old paintbrush and use that for all the eraser marks. Highly recommend.
we're keeping the savings tracker pretty simple and basically just making little bars for each of the accounts that I am saving money for. And I will just color them in as I save a little bit of money each month. So I'm just adding those down here and then I'll put them on the sides in the middle. I don't do it in this video, but afterwards I do write down what my savings goal is for the year. And once that whole rectangle is colored in, then I know I hit that savings goal and it's just, it's something simple, but it really helps motivate me to make me really happy to be able to see that number going up and just seeing like that bar graph, just getting, just getting a little bit more full each month makes, makes my heart happy. So I'm just adding those with my rulers, make them all nice and straight. I'm kind of like half the time use a ruler and half the time I don't use a ruler but today we're using ruler and adding those in I do have a couple of different accounts so I have like a retirement account I have a regular brokerage account I have a summer savings account because I sell teaching things online and so you know people people don't want to buy teaching things in the middle of summer totally don't blame them I don't either so I know that I make less in those months so I try to save for that so that it's not you know drastically different from my income the rest of the year um and then i also have what i call my goals savings account and my goals savings account is just exactly what it sounds like it's where i save for things that i am looking forward to in the future so I have a couple of goals that i'm you know a little tiny bit saving for not like actively saving a whole ton but just kind of just kind of thinking about it I added a green stripe around the outside of this page. And if you're looking for like an easy thing to add that will help tie your page together, that is something that I would say helps so much. It's really simple, but it just makes things look a lot more intentional when you have that little, just, just a little stripe in any color. I added in the names for each of the different things that I'm saving for and just kind of like little nicknames to help me remember what each of them is. And then on the right, I put a little word so that I remember to put down the total at the end of the year. Now I'm adding just a little piece of craft paper and this is going to be a couple of just like tips or reminders to help me save more money. So just a couple of different strategies that I can use to save more money, things to remember just as I'm, you know, going about my life. So those things are going in here. So those I wrote as savings rules. I work really well with the word rules because when it's a rule, I'm like, okay, cool. It's a rule. I'm going to do that. Or I'm going to not do that because that's the rule. Um, if rules are not your vibe, like totally understand, but they, they work for me, so I like that as headers. So I'm writing things down here to remember like 10% give, 10% save, and just different things to help me remember what my focus is and intention is with saving money this year. Now I'm just adding in a little piggy bank on the bottom corner, partially to just fill up that little space and partially because, you know, you think of savings, you think of piggy banks. It's just a thing. So having that on there just, you know, makes me, makes me a little happy, reminds me what we're working towards and it helps make something serious like money and finances and saving for retirement just feel a little bit more whimsical and fun. I would also like to encourage you if you are struggling to save any money. Um, even if you're, you know, paying off debt or whatever, I would encourage you to save something. Even if it's like I'm saving $5 a month or $10 a month, like it doesn't have to be much, but put something in a savings account because it will add up. And after a little bit, being able to look in there and be like, Oh, look, we have something really helps like just peace of mind because I cannot tell you how stressful it is when your, you know, air conditioner breaks or your tires blow out or whatever, and you don't have the money versus the feeling that you get when that happens and you do have the money. It's still frustrating, but it is so nice to just not be stressed. And if you have things you're saving for specifically, like goals that you want to do, um, I didn't previously have savings accounts for my goals. Um, and I finally just was like, 
I'm going to do this. And I'm even if I just put a little bit in each month, like put something in there because that is like literally you taking yourself closer to your goals and getting yourself one step closer to where you want to be. I really started this really last year about this time because I was just sick of still not having what I wanted to have. And so I was like, you know what? We're just, we're just going to do it. It's fine. And now I have 80,000 accounts and it's great. Anyway, on the right hand side, we are doing a little debt snowball Dave Ramsey tribute with this spread. So I just added the lines and wrote the word debt on it. And I'm using this circle tracer. I want to say it's from Michael's, but don't quote me on that. And I'm just tracing little snowballs with a blue marker here to, you know, because snowballs are, should be blue, that's the thing. If you're not familiar with Dave Ramsey, he is a financial coach. Is that what we're going to call him? He writes a bunch of books. He has a podcast um, and he talks a lot about, well, his whole thing is getting out of debt and like living in a way that is sustainable and good. And he's all about budgeting and all of those kind of things. I don't follow him to a T, but he calls his method, the debt snowball, which is where you pay off the smallest debt you have and pay the minimum payments on everything else. And then once that first one is paid off, then you put that minimum payment towards the next smallest one. So if you have a minimum payment of $50 a month, once that one is gone, because you put all your extra money onto that one, then you put all your extra money plus that $50 payment onto the next smallest debt. And so you go through them as quickly as you can because you're going through and starting with the smallest ones. And for morale, it's just really nice to be like, oh, yes, I paid off the first one. Um, and it helps you to really just keep going. So that's why we have snowballs here on this page. And I just add a little igloo down at the bottom to add some more stuff. Um, off camera, I added the names of different debt sources. Like, you know, I have student loans and I have a car um, and different things like that. And then the I put the total in there so that I remember. And then I am going to do basically the opposite of what I do with my savings tracker is each time I pay off an amount on there, I just color in a little bit of the snowball. Once the snowball is all the way colored in, then that means that whole snowball debt has been knocked out. The blue is not showing up on camera, but I promise you can see it in real life. So <laughs> there is that. And it's just a really simple little tracker to keep track of, you know, what's going on. So we've got savings on one side and debt on the other side. And here's all of those spreads together, all those financial spreads, hopefully to help me keep much better track of everything on, on top of everything this year. I would love to know how you keep on track of your money and any budgeting tips you have for me. So leave those down below in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.